Hello and welcome to another episode of The Tinkerer. Uh, it's a bit noisy today and I've been banished into the conservatory as my wife is tidying up my playroom. So um, we're going to have to make the best of it. Sorry if it's a little bit noisy. So you may have already seen my video on the Binance Home TV Master. Um, if not, check that out because it tells you all about it and how to disassemble it. I'm not going to go through that in this video. What we're going to do today is we're going to upgrade the old UHF output, which is the old analog TV system where you have to tune everything in because uh, it's a bit, bit flaky on this and we can get a much more stable signal if we have uh, a, a normal video output as you would get on cables like this. So I have ordered from tfw8b.com uh, a little kit that makes his job easier. So he's provided me with uh, this little gizmo here and a few cables and uh, hopefully a, a little bit of sticky back so I'll put this in the case somewhere where it's not going to rattle around or anything and the idea is that we'll put these in the on the video and uh, sound positions on the motherboard uh, he's got a helpful diagram that kind of uh, explains that that'll plug in there and then the output uh, is just simply the end of this cable to plug these into the TV and we should get a much more stable signal um, the other side effect of this is we'll get to see whether or not I can get the light gun working this time which I don't know maybe it will maybe it won't uh, we'll see what happens shall we uh, you can see from here, it's clearly labelled what there is. Uh, they've even given some examples of different types of consoles to put this in. This will work on an Atari 2600, uh, 7800, and yeah, there are just more instructions in terms of how to fit this on those machines. But these uh, have the same chip as is contained in here, and also I've got a Sega Master System 2. So I've bought two of these, so I'm going to stick one of those in the Master System 2, because that's the same thing, UHF only. And uh, let's see what we can do with that. The solder line's already hot, and uh, we're ready to go. So we've got it stripped down. The first thing I've noticed is from the blog, uh, from the futurewas8bit.com, uh, their own blog, and fitting one of these gizmos into the device, he's got a slightly different motherboard. Uh, the power he's got tapped into just here, and on the bottom of my board, I don't have that. So what we've got to do is just figure out uh, where the positive and negative are. The other trace lines, they seem fine. So what we're going to do is just power this up. Um, and one thing I do know on his diagram is that the power lines go through the controller ports here and here. So I'm just going to assume that trace is the same and power it up and test that. So you can see the multimeter. There we go. So we can see we've got just over six volts on there. Which interestingly, this little gizmo says it needs a five volt input. So I'm not sure if we're gonna have a problem there or if it will cope with just a few volts over. So now we're going to solder on the audio, which is fed from the main chip from this second leg here. And then the video, um, according to the blog, this is the, just before the modulation circuit. It also does say on the blog that you should make these cables as short as possible, um, but I'm just going to try it first as it is without cutting them all down and things. And the main reason for that is because I want to try and get the connector, which is just going to go on here, the output, rather than drilling through the case, um, I, I'm just going to hang it out the bottom so I'm not damaging the original case. So then we just need to put the circuit board back in. Okay, let's go and find a TV. So we've got it back together and it started raining now. Oh well. Uh, power it up. It takes a second for the screen to settle down. There we go. I'm not quite totally sure what that's all about, but you can see we've got a rock stable image and 
that is going to provide many hours of entertainment for somebody when I get it on the box. So there we go, another successful project. Uh, a shout out goes to the T the future was 8 bit, so that's tfw8b.com. I'll put a link in the description. And uh, their deluxe composite video mod kit, which has worked absolutely perfectly. Uh, it was only about tenner plus shipping, so that's a pretty good deal to be able to get a rock stable output like this. Um, I'm really pleased with how this has turned out, and uh, I've not damaged the console in any way. I haven't had to drill any more holes. Uh, I can show you what I've ended up with. Uh, which is just to have the battery compartment used to keep the old UHF cable in there. I can use that again if I wanted to and when I want to pack this away all I'm going to do is disconnect this, tuck it away in there and put the battery compartment back on. And that's all the way nice and neat for storage and I've got no worry about having damaged my console. Incidentally, I've got a foot missing, so if anyone out there's got a spare foot, get in contact, because that, really, that kind of thing really annoys me. So, thanks for watching, and uh, don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel, uh, comment, let me know anything I've missed, anything you want to see, and I'll do my best to accommodate you. Thanks very much, guys. See ya.